What is the most ridiculous thing the company you work for has wasted money on? Hiring me. For the past 3 years a certain craft store has sent me all over Georgia and Florida to fluff the display Christmas trees. Taking every branch and spreading them out. They pay for my gas, food, and hotel stay. I want to tell someone how much money they'd save just by having each store do it, but they gave me 600 on top of my hourly one year. My previous boss was too embarrassed to admit she didn't know how to do it by asking one of her employees. So instead she hired in a team of it tech consultants, four of them, to drive out to our office and move a shortcut icon slightly to the right on her desktop. It cost the company $600. Not my current company, but the one before it. Company laid off 50% of its workforce, and then the new CEO spent $600,000 on bonuses for his freshly hired executive team and another several hundred thousand on designer furniture and carpet for an office he used for 3 months before announcing that they needed something fancier and moved to another building. Or $350 office chair for on. Then that motherfucker does a job interview over Skype with a competing firm, and tries to take company information with him on usbs when he leaves. Meanwhile, I pay for my own coffee out of pocket when I travel. $350. Fuck you, Ron. I worked for a German company whose parent company spent a million dollars on a new slogan, so we have to use it on our business cards and email signatures. Problem was we were in the us, and the slogan in English was new energy emerges from brain took me months to convince them to stop. The biggest waste I've ever seen is definitely investing tons of money in people without interviewing them properly to make sure they're the right fit for the company. The company I work for has a fantastic graduate program. They hire you straight out of college and start you on a really good wage, then put you through 6-12 months of classroom training, professional mentoring, supervised projects etc to get your skill set up to a really higher level. They must spend your 50 plus K per candidate at least, when you consider all the external trainers, facilities, mentors, workshops etc etc all on top of the candidate's salary. They do all this fantastic work to get the best talent. But they invest almost no money in the interview process. I met my future manager totally by coincidence, told him about my thesis, and I must have sounded like I knew what I was doing, because he just gave me this gig. I'm still with the company 2 years later, and like to think I'm contributing, so he lucked out with me. But he might as well have paid a stranger a big bag of cash in the street in the hopes that he'd show up in the office on Monday and do some productive work. Of my class of 20, 5, that's at least 250k invested, remember, completed the training program, and then quit to go to another job, not because the salary slash benefits slash etc weren't the best, but because their personalities didn't fit the ethos of the company. I mean, if your company owns a genetically modified food company, and invests heavily in GM, you probably shouldn't hire a person who would is openly, vehemently opposed to GM food, whose past experience is made up entirely of different organic farming pursuits, and who's an in-your-face holistic vegan. The company I work for is very top-heavy. So many people making six-figure salaries that just go to meetings, to schedule meetings every day. A project that should take two months to complete will take eight months to get started meanwhile they're all getting paid to procrastinate. This to me is a real wasted money. Got a new seer and compensated him four million dollars in salary and stock each year for three years. He made an already bad problem even worse and spent much of his time standardizing ML signatures across the organization. Then he was dismissed. There's apparently a whole class of professional executives that know nothing about the industries they are hired to lead, fail miserably, then bounce off to the next high paying engagement. As other posters have indicated, I will wreck your company for half the money my competition charges. Shop here first. My overtime, because they never hired enough people, and I was the only one who wouldn't rage quit. Eventually during the busiest season they relied on me to cover most dropped shifts and roles, but once when they blatantly scheduled me to come in and cover two dropped shifts one weekend on two times I'd received off for something specific, without asking or even even notifying me, I said I could do one day not the other. The reply I got was I need you to be there, thanks so that's when I finally quit. 
Leaning on one employee as a strategy is like physically leaning on a person. You literally push them away and stagger when they leave. Slash endrant. You know you're going to be in for a headache when the small business you're hired to do it for has a paid for copy of WinRAR on their main computer. $3,400 a month to lease a labeler. It takes 2 minutes to print out day dots and stuff for produce and prep food. When I found out how much it cost, after we've been begging for new hires after constantly working ridiculously long hours, we all decided to boycott the labeler and even fought with our corporate supervisors about it during work hours. They eventually ridded us of the labeler and hired a dishwasher and another cook. I won't say the company's name or anything but never work at Applebee's. I don't work there anymore, but the Swedish mail service just recently changed name from Post and the Postal Service to PostNord, Mail North to incorporate their cooperation with the Danish Postal Service and so on. While this makes sense on paper, throwing literally millions of dollars at rebranding comes at a really bad time now, when the Postal Service are making huge down cuts. There is also the fact that the previous postal logo and traditional yellow color may have been one of the strongest and most recognizable brands in Sweden. New color for everything from post boxes to cars is now blue. I haven't heard anyone say it's a good idea, even from management's perspective. Corporate culture training. Once every couple of years, the C-level executives decide we need a more dynamic corporate culture, then they spend a couple hundred thousand dollars to hire some corporate consultants, buy everyone a feel-good self-help book, and make us all sit in a day-long meeting. We are told what things make us ineffective as an organization, and are given nice little reference cards with catchy slogans for more effective workplace behavior. We are then forced to use these slogans for about 6 months before the leadership realizes nothing is changing, and the higher ups aren't allocating enough money to support the ongoing initiatives proposed in the first couple of meetings. Once there isn't any money propping the whole shambling mess up, it falls apart, and we basically go back to doing what we were doing, rinse and repeat every 3 or so years. Paying me to fix their servers. Turned it off and on again. One minute of work for the whole week rest of time I was playing games. Paying me to fix their website. Some retarded coder hadn't put in any automatic image compression for their thumbnails, so they had 10 MB thumbnails ruining their site loading speed and crashing it. There was no automatic way to do it, so I resized all the images using an automatic macro, gave them out to everyone, and told them to use the macro or the images to upload to thumbnails in the future. I also turned a lot of PCS on and off, reconnected a keyboard that had been pulled out, helped a lady figure out why she couldn't open her presentation without having PowerPoint installed, etc. For a year I worked as a laborer for a construction company. They had me and another laborer spend every day of the week for about 2 months spray painting pipes in the ceiling. I'm not complaining due to it being easy work, but the thing no one understood was that we had painters still on site that could have blasted everything that took us months to paint in the matter of a week. To this day, don't understand the point. To this day miss the overtime I was getting every day to stand on a scaffold and spray paint. I was a self-proclaimed Bob Ross of the job site. A few months before the business was to move, and the old building was to be demolished, they paid to have the entire facility equipped with new energy efficient lighting fixtures, every room in the place, only to have it torn down a few months later. It wasn't a requirement by the city, just some executives whim to have this hugely expensive project accomplished while he was still in charge. In my office. The whole office got closed for a month to do some decorating, I, E, painting, reorganizing the office and other stuff. When I came back a month later, it still wasn't done as the builders had said they weren't willing to work the hours they had agreed to, so it was a real mess. With shelves off the walls, doors off the hinges, filing cabinets all over the place. When it finally got finished, all that changed, literally, was the doors which were before color coded, were now all gray. It took 2 months in the end just to do that. There was an employee appreciation week, and one day the head honcho in my office was standing by the doors in the morning handing out cards to everyone that came in that said something to the effect of thank you for being a valuable member of our team. They were printed on really thick, glossy high quality cardstock. The thing that got me was she was completely silent as she handed them out. 
I might have actually felt appreciated if she, oh I don't know, said thank you with her voice. All I could think when I read the card was how they cold spent the money they spent on those cards on upgrading from single ply TP and my moral world skyrocketed. I'm a teacher in a fairly well off school district in Alabama. For the past 3 years we've been buying iPads for every single student to use. This year we made the move to the more affordable Chromebook. The entire thing is a waste of money. And I'm a huge technology advocate. These personal devices can be used in creative ways educationally, but learning is not increased by them. Also, students who are honest say the devices are a bigger distraction than they are an educational tool. After trying my hardest for the first 3 years to use the iPads in creative and helpful ways I've given up and told my students that we will not be using Chromebooks in my classroom. I can already tell this year that my students are more engaged in the lesson. At one of my previous jobs in 2011, the company made us work on Christmas Eve, whether we wanted to or not. Around a quarter of the staff had to work in the building as usual, they said they had like 3 customers that whole day, and the rest of us had to go bowling with the manager. Yes, had to. You had to sign in and out, and if you were not there, it was considered skipping a day of work, and you would be penalized. I had to miss Christmas Eve with my family that year, because I was forced to go bowling with a bunch of people that I hate. God forbid they just give us the day off without pay. Several companies ago the one I was working for at the time was a huge telecommunications company. As soon as this whole team concept hit, they jumped on it like crazy. Now of course it was the usual horse shit. Manager was renamed to coach. Employee was renamed to team member. But then it got stupid. All conference rooms were renamed to huddle rooms. And then it got even stupider. There was an entire department that included managers and a director and their only task was to drive this team message. They traveled all over the world to all of our offices and held these huge meetings to talk about how we'd renamed everything. In the end, nothing changed but the names. You still had a boss. You still met in conference rooms. Not as ridiculous as others in this thread but my boss scheduled a team training in Reno, NV, with an outside company to train us. There are 10 people in our team, all of us live all over the states, none in NV. So my company paid for flights slash food slash hotels for all 10 of us to go to this week long training. My boss being the amazing organizer slash planner, that he has forgot to actually schedule the training with the other company. He does shit like this pretty often, so I wasn't too surprised. So we went for a week long trip to Reno. We gambled and drank all week, it went okay. But fuck what a waste of money. My company is a sort of call center slash support service for a health insurance company and holy shit did the health insurer waste money on technology. Multiple different systems all doing the exact same thing. Millions of dollars sunk into each system and every time a system didn't quite pan out they just abandoned it and moved on to a new one. My company has in-house software engineers that put out more usable technology with 4 or 5 programmers than the large insurer did with dozens. Although the rising cost of healthcare can mostly be attributed to costs going up at the provider level, I assure you that your health insurer is a bloated mess that sole function is to make healthcare less effective. 